It is the riot. Let's check my phone and see if I have any messages. Now, in this podcast, though, you you probably talk about not checking your phone. Actually, I left that out. Oh, you left it out? I did. Oh, Obi had a weekend well, of, you know, putting the phone away, and so I we did. talked about it. I enjoyed it a great deal, and uh, I highly recommend it because, man, it's annoying. <laughs> my phone is starting to annoy me. No, it's we have not. A, we're codependent. Like I, we need each other. But it's we, not your phone's fault, but it's just you know what it does to you. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Technically, it's not its fault. I've given people the, the number. The relationship. I've installed yeah, too many it. messaging apps, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. It's true. It's true. So, hey, uh, in the podcast today, we talk Thirty Rock. That made it. I, it's interesting, actually, compared, like, if you think about, especially if you like comedies, um, how many jokes per minute are in a it's show crazy. and the fact that someone would keep track of that. Yeah, The Atlantic t- took some time. But, you know, they're a magazine. They've got time, Nikki. Uh, we talk about new old James Bond cars. I watched Space Force over the weekend. One episode. One Yes, which may be a hint as to where <laughs> that all goes. Uh, we talk about Nikki watching Space X. Uh, am I your PC drug dealer? And probably the most important thing that happens today is that Hudson and Chris join us later in the show. We talked last week about what happened to Chris when he was eating lunch Hudson. one day. Or Hudson. Well, I'm sure Chris still had something. <laughs> it's probably, not a lie. Yeah. Uh, but we talked to Hudson uh, about his issue last week where he had a Band-Aid in his food. And we go straight, finally, we go straight to the source. And we talk to him to clear up some of the things and find out what really happened to him. And what do you think would that keep you from doing? Yeah. We we get into it. <laughs> we get into it. Lots to talk about it. And you know what? It's post-show. We'll text this person back. But Nate just texted and said that Jonah is about to run his first half marathon. Wish hey, him luck. Hey, good job. Um, so the show is not on anymore, but Aww. I'll text him. But you know what? Here it is in the podcast. There you so, go. So, Jonah, I hope you had a good race. If you're interested, too, we're hosting our first ever official 5K. We used to do that, or we would do that for Radio U in the Ohio area. But because of COVID and stuff, we turned that into a virtual 5K, which is great because now people from across the country can participate and help run a 5K to help to support the riot and support Radio U and get some exercise and, and have some fun times, get a shirt and a medal for it. So if you want to check out RadioU.com slash 5K, you might want to join and do that with us. Okay. Well, we're doing it. Yeah. Everybody's doing It'll it. It'll be fun. So take a minute and look at that when you're done with the podcast. All right. Well, you guys have a fantastic Monday. Woo! Yes. Man, feel the opportunity. <laughs> Thanks for listening today. It is the riot. The riot. They're kind of a big deal. Uh, hey, can we do that again? Maybe a little more energy? Uh, no. Radio U. Big weekend. And uh, with everything going on, I'm not sure that you heard the news. So uh, I thought we'd just go ahead and get to it immediately. And that is? Uh, for the second month in a row, I have achieved gold status in the Duchess Rewards Program. Congratulations! That means throughout the month of June, yeah. I will be receiving double <laughs> points for all purchases that I make Aww. at a Duke and or Duchess station. That's a gas station. And I believe that includes B... Yeah, it's all BP stations. So... Uh, hey, proud of you. First off, I didn't think you could do that in May. You, it's thing, been a month. I know. And the thing you got to understand is you can't just get that. I'm right. You have to go back and go back and go back and go back. I mean, I think that comes down to, I believe it requires 12 visits. Oh, really? Yeah. I in order for, been more. for you to achieve gold status Listen, in the Duchess loyalty program. Is there anything then above that or is that it? Um, no, no, no. That is the top there's not like tier. platinum or uh, no, no, no. <laughs> the mystery card that no one else gets, but you go so often you received one. Yeah. All right, so here we go, Nikki. Now that you've leveled up, yeah, you'll receive all of the bronze and silver perks, plus double points for purchases, royal sweepstakes entries, entries, and instant wins. It's just again proud of you. Come on. Did you get one this morning? Is that when you found out? No, I didn't. I got the email this morning because today is June 1st. Oh, so you get to start again. Now do you have to do this every month in order to maintain or oh, are yeah. you just in yeah. there now? You can't. No, no, no. You. This is something that you can't just achieve it and then, you know, you rest on the achievement. 
You've got to work for it. Every month. Every month. <laughs> I wasn't sure because like a long time ago when I was younger, Starbucks used to have a different points program mm-hmm. and you would main like you would get gold and then you could maintain it for the year. Yeah. But then you'd have to within that year, you know, like sometime within it level up, but it wasn't month by month. Okay. No, no, no. Like that Starbucks stuff, that's for wimps. The Duchess Yours is the program real thing. Yours is, is for real. real. Well, right. again, I am uh, proud of you. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, get going. Yeah. Get going back to get some soda. Well, you know what? It's amazing. I'm out of gas, so I'm going to have to go get gas today. And while I'm there, I'll just go on in. <laughs> Start working on June. Get a scan. <laughs> right? <laughs> Woo! You're right. It is June 1st, isn't it? Man. Things are happening. It's all coming together. (laughs) All right. June is going to be our month. Yeah, it is. The one. The big one. Worst Worst of of the the riot. riot. Radio U. I don't know what you guys did over the weekend. My weekend did not involve, uh, let's say, as much TV watching as I had planned. In fact, one of the things I said on Friday is that I just had to spend more time in front of my TV and I just didn't do that. Whenever you actually go into the weekend wanting to, that's when it doesn't happen. Yeah. So I found this article this morning that I do think is pretty interesting. Nobody's talking about it, obviously. An old show, 30 Rock. Mm -hmm. It's on Hulu. It's on Amazon Prime. They say that 30 Rock may actually, on average, have more jokes than any other show on TV. Really? They say that the average episode of 30 Rock has 7.4 jokes per minute. Wow. I never thought to see which one would be the most. I, me either. But 7.4 jokes per minute. They say that 30 Rock, if you're paying attention, there are jokes going on that like. You don't even catch it they first? Don't, they draw no attention to it. You have to be paying attention to see it. It'll be a visual joke or it'll be a callback or whatever. And they say that they're loaded with. So then it's not just dialogue. It could be something going on in the background. Yeah. Mm. It's that is, I will tell you, it's probably one of the smartest TV shows I've ever seen. I've the there are very few shows that reward you for watching the way that does with the humor. Yes. If you really, really pay attention to what's going on, it's crazy how much can be there, though. I never imagined it was that many that many that that's kind of a lot. It has to work because sometimes there's been other shows. I'm thinking of one, but I won't say it. That try to fill in poor writing, <laughs> which is joke after joke after joke, and it doesn't always work. Yeah. So I don't know. That is, for what it's worth, I will tell you the Jack Donaghy character of Thirty Rock is probably one of my favorite fictional characters of all time. I wonder how it does now though, because Thirty Rock when it was on. Did okay, and then sometimes did not. Like it, it wasn't really. It lasted a while. It but did. It wasn't as much. I don't. I don't know. Probably, probably not great. When you meet other people that like it, it's. It just feels like it's very rare that you find someone that likes it. But it, the quality of the writing was so good. And again, the I like absurdist humor, and there's so, <laughs> so much of it. There's so much of it. The humor is absurd. And that's, I thought, what made it so funny. So, I don't know. Uh, But it's there. 7.4 jokes per minute. That's a lot. That's exhausting. (laughs) Tired just talking about it. I know. You're like, I don't know if I want to go back into watching anything about it. A Rotten Tomatoes score so high, they refuse to make it public. The Riot on Radio U. So, you know, America kind of eating itself over the weekend uh, with a lot of the protesting that's been going on. Uh, like many of you, I I both watched and avoided it at the same time. I, I did a little bit of both. Um, it's been like just heartbreaking and terrible to watch. I feel like I have, I spent a lot of time listening to uh, a couple of different people and uh, got their takes. And I, I'll have to say, I have walked away with a very different perspective uh, this weekend than I had before. Uh, due to some of the people that I listen to. When people say that, you know, they're afraid of the police and they're afraid to walk down the street, I have to admit that I there were times when I was very dismissive of comments like that. And after what I saw and listened to this weekend, I'm no longer dismissing comments like that. I see that. I see it. Like, I, I get it. I feel like I get it in a way that I didn't get it. And uh, I'm very sorry uh, for one being dismissive and two for people that are in that position that when you see the police you're afraid of them or you wonder 
what's going to happen. Like I, I, it's hard for me to imagine that the world I live in in America in 2020 that someone could feel that way. All of that being said, the next step is like, okay, well, what am I going to do about it? What do we do? What are, what are we going to do? So one of the things, like my take on that is as follows. Uh, I think that you should pray for our country and its people. That is something that gets mocked a lot. People say thoughts Dismissed, and yeah. yeah, people say thoughts and prayers, and it's like a it's a joke, and you're a joke for saying that, and whatever. Um, and I don't think so. And here's why: um, I think that God cares about America. I think He cares about people. I think He cares about the people who live here, uh, and I think He cares about your neighbor. And I think it's good to take some time and pray about it. And I think it's good to pray about what you can do. See, I'm not saying that you pray and then you just don't do anything. Uh, If you feel like you need to do something, one of the things I would encourage you to do is pray because here's what I think. I think that there are a lot of people that want to take advantage of your desire to do something. Uh, They want to manipulate people. This is a great place for some people. It's going to be a great power grab. You'll see new political organizations birthed out of difficulty like this. Uh, And that's not all bad. Uh, But there are going to be people that want to take you and manipulate you into doing something that maybe you wouldn't normally do, which is why I think if you start with God and say, all right, God, there's there's a problem or, you know, I want to do something. What should I do? And God says that if you don't know what to do and you ask him, he's going to give you wisdom about what to do. He's going to show you how to do it and what to do. And I think that action that starts with a conversation with God to get a clear idea about what to do next is the best action that you can be involved in. Find out what it is that God wants you and your particular circumstance to do. I had a friend that went to a protest. Maybe that was for her. But maybe it's not for you. Maybe for you, it's you need to go do blank. I don't know what it is, but you can ask God about it. Now, if you don't have a relationship with God, that might seem a little ethereal and out there. But look, Jesus loves you. He cares about you. He doesn't. It's not about, you know, uh, I he just loves you where you are and wants to have a relationship with you. And you can take to him the problems of your country or the problems of your house or just the problems that are taking place in your room. God wants to be a part of every single level of your life. And if you don't have a relationship with him, you just ask. Just say, Jesus, I want you in my life. I want you to fill me with your spirit. And God, today, I want you to help me. I want you to help my country. I want you to show me what I can do to make a difference where I am. And God's all about that. The riot has now been downloaded. Uh, I hope you installed some antivirus. This is the worst of the riot podcast. I want to say hi to Madison, who is not listening. So, well, are we saying this for her in the podcast? I guess. <laughs> Actually, she, that happens a lot. She sent us a picture. She says, I'm awake during riot times, but I'm not listening. Ha ha ha. Well, hello, great. hello from Corolla, North Carolina. She sent us an absolutely beautiful photo. Of a sunrise at the beach. Oh, nice. She says, I'm sure it's very encouraging when listeners share with you the cool things they're doing that you aren't. Well, you know, we're all right with it. We're happy to at least feel like we're along the journey with you. It It is beautiful. Like the idea of sitting there or standing there with a cup of coffee, just watching the sun come up. Oh, It's like when you guys share, you literally will send us pictures of your breakfast and <laughs> oh, we like of amazing breakfast. We live through that, too. So <laughs> it's almost the same. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what, man, in the morning, like when Nikki and I, I can't speak for Nikki, but I can tell you for me, I am like today. I slept until what was the last possible moment. moment. I gave myself a three minute window because last night when I went to bed, I promised myself McDonald's for breakfast. And I did deliver on that promise. Well, good. <laughs> so those of you that are afraid I might be lying to myself, no, you, I am not you lying it. to myself. <laughs> I absolutely did get. Well, it was Madison, right? Yes. Madison, thank you for sending the picture from where you're at. And hopefully you'll hear this later with our podcast. Yeah. And just thanks a lot for being a, a big jerk. No, a supportive friend. Supportive jerk? No, a supportive friend. Okay. Just sharing. It's all she's doing. Okay. (laughs) All right. Wow. Not only are you already awake, but you're listening to the riot. Your day is off to a pretty rough start. 
The Riot on Radio U. So over the weekend, or maybe it was just late last week, Aston Martin made a an announcement. They have started building the Aston Martin DB5 again. You're like, well, what's the Aston Martin DB5? Ah, uh, the Bond car. It's the classic James Bond car. Like, the one. Uh, that was featured in Goldfinger first. 1964. Yeah. First appearing there. And they say, hey, I love this. This may be the oldest new car on sale. It's amazing. They are literally re making like and you can see in these photos the production line where they're just remaking these old cars so is there any there's no updates to it or well yeah now they say it's classic styling with you know modern engine ah uh, inside mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh it's been this car by the way this would be the one that like in if you watch the new daniel craig stuff in skyfall he drives this car What's he have M in it, and they drive to the Skyfall place, and then I think it shows up at the end of Spectre as well. Though, and it's not that good of a movie, so so I, you don't you know. not really remembering as much. You only remember things from the good movies. Is that it? That's not true. You're just not a fan. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, they say that they are. This is another quote. They're using old world techniques to build it, but applying modern engineering and performance measures. They say that it takes about 4,500 hours to make one to make one of these cars, and they are making it essentially by hand uh, with you know a few other things. Uh, it also will feature the uh, several of the James Bond. Uh, Do I get the movies. Mm-hmm. I get downloads of the movies that play well, on the. No. Oh. Uh, it has some of the like spy gadgets oh, that, that were featured in, in the movie. Yeah, a simulated oil slick. Revolving number plates, fake machine guns, and a rear smoke screen that it will actually, they have video of it, it'll pump out some smoke. Well, so, yeah, we have cars that do that, too. Yeah, Mike. <laughs> and I don't have to pay at some Martin prices for free it. Free charge. <laughs> Just a few thousand dollars to replace the engine block, but the no big deal. The simulation of it, it's real. No big deal, <laughs> right? Uh, they say a four, oh. four liter, six cylinder engine. Um, with a five-speed manual driving. Now, tell me the price, because you haven't said it yet. That's the big one. Is there no price? It's so much money? No. I am seeing uh, about $3.5 million. Oh, really? No, excuse me. Um, that was what I they were saying originally. It's about $5.1 million. It's 2.75 million pounds, which currently comes out to five, out more? $5.1 million. Five million dollars for one of these cars. They're only making twenty-five of them. So these are the DB fives. Yes. Okay. I think between sixty-three and sixty-five, when they made them, they cost twelve thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars. I think if I'm reading that right, that's what they used to cost then. Yeah, but that's like nineteen sixties money. So well, who yeah, that what? Knows? Well, I don't know what that converts to, but this is too much money. Oh, it's a lot. I don't want it. It's fine. I didn't want it anyways. Stupid. It's not like it's a comfortable sucks. car. This sucks. <laughs> what a bigger car. <laughs> I don't even want this one. Think about how many like normal people cars you could buy with $5 million. Oh, I mean, we could all have cars for days. <laughs> That's crazy. I could buy every staff member at Radio U a brand new car and still have $4 million left over. And remember, we're just... I feel more like I'm a realistic person because I don't even think about that's the price of the car, but how do you insure it? How do you even get it to where you can ride this thing? I don't think... Do you drive this car around? Probably not. Then why you, this are you is buying like, it? This is a Sunday drive. Well, that's for the same you reason. You still need insurance. The people who buy this are the same people that buy like video game statues where they're like, look, this is my Batman statue. <laughs> You buy it to put it in a corner, and it just sits there. So, like, people come over, and you show them the DB5. And then it goes out every so often from your country home. Yeah, pretty much. Your weekend house. Yeah. You know, well, one of them. One of them. Well, it looks nice. It it looks good. So, it's the old uh, James Bond car. They're back in production. Though, I guess the other side of this would be that you know that this is one of the few things in life you could buy that would appreciate in value. There's only 25 of them being made. You pay $5 million for it. 
it's already worth more than that when you buy it. I'm oh, sure. I got to go back and find one of the ones from the 60s and maybe just happen to find one, you know, where they, they're like, oh, it was in a barn somewhere and no one knew. A barn find, huh? Yeah, and then you are able to uh, restore it lovingly and then sell it. <laughs> you know what, Nikki? You should start playing Forza Horizon 4 with me. Oh, is that how it barn is? Barn finds are part of the game. Oh, are they? That's fun. Everything you love about the Riot, plus a handy-dandy fast-forward option. This is the Worst of the Riot podcast. Who watched Space Force over the weekend? Space Force. The new show on Netflix with the guy from The Office and the guy from The Thing and the person from The Other Thing. (laughs) Yes. Did you guys watch that? I watched it. I saw a lot of promotion for it, but I didn't see anybody talking about it outside of just what was um, uh, bought. Yeah. You know, chatter that was bought. Um, I didn't see anybody just actually talking about it who had seen it. Well, I watched the first episode. How many are there? Are there? I. You know what? I don't know. Ten, maybe? I, I'll just tell you that it, by the time I got through the end of the first episode, I was done. It's not funny? It's not funny. Oh, that's too bad. In fact... I didn't think it was funny at all. Like, I, at no point did I, I mean, maybe like a couple of like, uh, uh, small chuckles, little ones, just little ones. And but I feel no- like the first episode is supposed to be the, the best that they've got to at least get you hooked to watch the rest of them. Well, and I understand that a lot of shows, like you have to give them time. It takes time, Nikki. You got to establish the characters, blah, 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 whatever. I, I get what you're saying with that. I can also tell you that... Just not good? No. That just happens. That does happen. It just... It some, had poor reviews going into it last week. I wanted to like it. I mean, I actually think on paper, the notion is hilarious. Mm-hmm. But in practice, like watching it play out, it was like, uh, no. Like, uh, I can see why. And, you know, they keep these jokes keep coming up and you're like... Yeah, I mean, I I can see why that would be funny. Like why on paper, in why a that thing. seems funny, but I uh, in presentation here. That's a no. You're not going to watch no, the rest of them. I don't think so. I don't think so. I really tried though. Did anybody else watch any of them? Did you get past the first episode? See, I thought you might give it a shot. No way. Like not even one. No. Why? Why? Why, Why would I? <laughs> I don't know. Cause... Just not. It wasn't interesting to me to go into it. Yeah. The only thing that I thought was funny was in a trailer, mm-hmm. and it wasn't as fun. What was even funnier to me is that it's not as funny in context. I was in the first episode. Yeah, it was yeah. funny in the trailer, but like once you put it in the episode, it was like, oh, not as funny. Like really, not as funny because there was the big build up and then the poor aftermath. Well, if you watched all of it or any of it, uh, feel free to text, and you can just confirm to Obi that he made the right choice if you only watched the first episode. Somebody somewhere <laughs> has to like it. No, maybe no one watched it. <laughs> There's also a good chance no one did see it. I'm not buying it. Somebody somewhere. <laughs> someone saw it. <laughs> Somebody saw it. Proper planning prevents poor performance. Clearly. The riot didn't properly plan. This is the worst of the riot on Radio U. Nikki, space fan and future <laughs> astronaut. No, I the whole time I watched it on Saturday, I thought, don't maybe I shouldn't tell Obi because I don't want him to think I'm interested in space stuff. But that was amazing to watch on Saturday. The SpaceX uh, launch. I didn't know much going into it. Like I knew something was going on, but yeah. I had to ask Eric for some input or info on some context. Yeah, some context. Why on, is this important? Yeah, Eric? like why is it SpaceX? Is it NASA? Like. Who's what and doing all that. But it was amazing to watch. I was quite impressed. So the short, probably oversimplified version is that NASA gave SpaceX a ton of money to develop a reusable rocket that they could use to put people in space. This is the first time since 2011, I believe, that American astronauts have lifted off from American soil. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now, this is... They've already done, SpaceX has done 20 cargo resupply missions unmanned Mm -hmm. to the International Space Station. This is the first time with astronauts. This is the first time there were astronauts on board to make this happen. And so it's a very big deal. It was huge. I was watching through NASA on their Facebook page, and it was, <laughs> it reminded me of like esports uh, when watching the production of it. Yeah. Because with esports, if you like esports, you love it. But then if you don't, but you watch it, you get into it. Yeah. Because you, you can tell it's passionate people about what they like to do. Yes. Because when I was watching this, you could tell everybody there was super 
excited that it worked and that it was amazing. And they were all so positive about it. I was like, yeah, you know, cheering along with them. I thought it was, and it was produced in a way that just reminded me of, you know, a very modern take on, um, you know, space things. Yeah. And speaking of modern, like when you got to look inside the actual capsule itself and like their spacesuits, it all looks. It looks amazing, but I was afraid it wasn't enough. Like, <laughs> like was, hey, this didn't it need to look different. <laughs> shouldn't this be like, you know, space suity, like more jankety looking, yeah, like poofier something. <laughs> uh, but no, they you know what? It, it went really well. So the they docked with the International Space Station yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, it actually did. They did they dock Saturday morning or Sunday morning. I don't know. I think but it was like Sunday, uh, yesterday. they have docked with them. They said they launched. Yeah, they launched Saturday. It was about 18 hours in orbit. Then they docked with the International Space Station and it's happened. My favorite now, thing was when the is it the engine drops down away from it, uh-huh. and then normally they lose so much money because I don't know if you can recover it or if it just goes in the ocean. But this one was programmed to land on the ship so they can just reuse it again. Right. And they had a circle and it landed right in the circle. It's like right there. That was impressive. Yeah. Well, and that's part of the, uh, you know, like I don't. You probably haven't paid attention, or you may have seen the headlines, but where they were trying mm-hmm. those rocket landings, and some of them didn't make it. Well, and so was, that's been part of their. Eric told me that he had listened to a podcast a long time ago about a engineer who said he knew how to do it, and NASA was like, "No, that's the one thing could never ever happen. Like you could not do this. You could not save that part or have it just land." And he knew, and he did it, and he went to Elon and said, "Hey." And it worked. I got this figured out, bro. Yeah, it was so impressive. So I still don't want to go in space, but that was neat to watch. <laughs> I I was, it was really something. Like, it really was. So congratulations to SpaceX. And uh, again, it's cool that the private sector did this. Like, I, I'm impressed because this enabled them to, well, NASA says they're open to more private contracts. Mm-hmm. So there are more companies out there. They're going to be working on things. And uh, what's his name over at Amazon? Jeff Bezos. Yeah, does he, he want to? Oh, well, he has another. He has a company as well. well we know that, he has enough money. but <laughs> Well, he has a private space company, but I can't remember what it's called. They're the ones that have like developed a moon lander. Does and, everybody have one? Well, we don't. I know, but it feels like everybody has one. Well, you know, Nikki, you reach that point where you're rich enough that everybody it just feels like all these guys are chasing tony stark they're like we saw iron man once and we're gonna be that we okay? can totally do that we can totally do that. that's the <laughs> next level it was bad enough the first time around but now it's worse don't believe us just keep listening you'll find out soon enough this is the worst of the riot podcast you know i'm looking at this young man nikki mm-hmm. he's not a boy he's a young man 13 Four associate's degrees, going on a full scholarship to some school in Colorado. I mean, like, he, he's living his best life right now. And I look at him, and uh, I do, I see myself brilliant, young, uh, impressive, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but, you know, over the weekend, I, I don't know if you guys know this, but it was about the age of 13 that I started this destructive habit that I have in my life. I might have been 12, uh, but it was playing video games on PCs. <laughs> and uh, it's led for you to be where you're at right now. <laughs> it's gone for a long time. Not and console gaming, PC gaming. I'm telling you right now that once you, oh gosh, it is the... It's the purest form of addiction. Once you get a taste of it. Is it? Once you realize. What's a bag, like, what's that first hit look like when it comes to PC gaming? Well, I'll tell you free what Free download, happened. free uh, game. I, it might, for some people, it might be that. For me, it's just the realization of, like, better graphics is. <laughs> and you're like, then you start looking at things like frame rate. You're like, oh, I could get the frame rate up. You just drop this. You just do that. You just tweak that. You just load highmem.sys, and you put it, like, there's... It's where you start. And all I can say is, like, turn away. And you're like, oh, why are you talking about this? I'll tell you why. Because I helped somebody build a gaming PC not too long ago. And uh, is this you or? No, no, no. Okay, you actually did help somebody. Oh, no, I really helped somebody. And well, then what are you doing being a dealer? Like, what are you doing starting that off? Someone came to my door last night going, hey, psst, I hear you help people build ah. gaming PCs. <laughs> 
<laughs> now, now it's opened up. Can you? Are you gonna make money off of this you, though, or no? Well, then. No, you're not which a makes it even worse. I'm I'm you're a volunteer. Right. I'm a volunteer out there getting the kids addicted <laughs> to silicon. Then it is worse. I'm telling you, man, once you get, I'm, it's just, I stay on your consoles, kids. Don't be like me. Don't go down this path <laughs> because here's how it ends up. Eventually you have, you have more money than time and you start putting money into stuff and you're like, I can tweak it just a little bit more. You're this, a tweaker. Was this your first weekend with your new graphics card? Was that what why if, it was especially? What if it was? Okay. Did it work out well? But see, no, Nikki, it doesn't, that doesn't even matter. It's new graphics card. Because you know what? There's always a new graphics card. <laughs> now you're and on to the next And there's always thing. a new processor. <laughs> Never happy. And there's always some better RAM. Aww. There's always something. something better. And then now everybody's like, no, now we put pretty lights inside. We put the lights in it. Well, may this be a warning. RGB. Do you want to become this? Do you want to end up like this? Is that what you want? Because I learned it from you. I learned it from watching you. <laughs> so I just want to make sure everybody's aware before you like, wow, it sounds great. He seems to really enjoy that PC gaming. I need to do that. Listen, I love it, but I'm just telling you, you don't, you know, uh, there's an old saying that sin is pleasurable for a season. Okay. It's that thing where it, at the right point, when you look at an addict's life, it looks like they're having a lot of fun, but then you, you don't see everything else. You don't see them late at night with oh the God. thermal paste. You're just, <laughs> what are you doing? You know, it's not, it's just PC gaming. No, <laughs> just turn bad. back. No, turn back. It can't be that bad. Don't be like me. <laughs> you don't want this. You, you actually don't said want thermal it. paste. <laughs> Nikki, you got to use it. I guess. Obadiah and Nikki tried their hardest. And that's what really matters. This is the worst of the Ryan podcast. So I'm going to tell you guys, but I'm not going to tell everybody else what I'm doing today. Today, I'm going back to the gym. You are for the first time. Yep. It's open. Yep. It's open. It's been open for a week. I thought you Uh, weren't ready yet. I joined another gym, one that's close to my home. And, uh, yeah, no, I'm going back. I just decided, uh, you know what? Like I've been kind of upfront about it or maybe you've read between the lines, but like I've had some real mental health struggle over the last few months. That's I'm always struggling with something, but everybody um, has had some struggles, especially if you were working out beforehand and then suddenly you couldn't and, uh, a home workout wasn't for everybody. I don't seem to be able to work out at home. Uh, I even had a chance. Eric was going to sell me his unbuilt uh squat rack that he had built this thing looked awesome but i just realized like i just don't do well working out at home i need to to go to a place i need to go somewhere uh, because because it is right now aside from this i'm working from home so i what do i do i go home and i have to work in the same place that i have to play and then i have to work out like that's that is not easy and yeah okay First world problems, right? I get it. But I'm just telling you, like, it's not that easy. So I just decided, I found out that the YMCA near my house is open. And I'm like, I went and signed up on Saturday, signed a waiver in which I agreed 15 different ways oh, that, that if I got COVID-19, I wouldn't, wouldn't sue in. them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or I wouldn't come in that yeah. too. Uh, I seemed like it was mostly built around suing. Did but... you cancel the other one or are you just going to keep that too? Well, I think it's a one year contract. And so the penalties for canceling are way higher than just letting it run until oh, the, sure, until the year's year over. is up. Yeah, because it's only $10 a month. So I think I'm just going to leave that open. And I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I went in on Saturday and just kind of looked around and saw most people not wearing masks. Uh, some people wearing them in between sets. Mm-hmm. So, like, I don't know what that will end up looking like. Uh, I don't know if that I'll end up regretting this terribly. I don't know. <laughs> But uh, I do know that I really, really, really want to go back to the gym. Are they so, open early enough? No. Oh, so you have to go later? No, this would be a midday thing for me uh, sometime after the show. Um, and I have not gotten, since I switched to morning workouts, I have not done my full like workout routine in a long time. So I got a couple of different books that I've worked out of. I got one of them out, laid my workout out. I figured out what that's going to look like and what it's going to take. And You're going back today. I'm in. All right. Yeah. 
Well, that's exciting. Now it's something kind of going back to normal a little yeah. bit. Like it's on the right the right steps. I, I'm going to be real curious to see. I'm very curious to see how many people will be there because I've never been there at this time of day. So what will that look like, et cetera, et cetera? I don't know. You'll find out. I will find out. And hopefully I'll be fine. <laughs> So tomorrow we'll get to hear how you had a, a good workout. Right. And you can't uh, you can't shower. Like, there's so many things there that are, like, closed. Well, you have to bring your own water. Yeah, okay. Um, so no water fountain? No water fountain. You got to bring your own bottled water. But I got that. Sure. This is the worst of the riot on Radio U. You know, a lot of times we allow our lack of equipment, our lack of, uh, you know, whatever, to shrug off our need to get exercise, and myself included. You just heard me. <laughs> Talk about that very thing. But there are people out there that are going, huh, uh, no. Like Johnny Gregorek, he's 28 years old, and he just set the world record for running the fastest mile in a pair of blue jeans. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Because if we could run, we would run in jeans. I love it. <laughs> so what? what's the record, though, for like running a... Uh, so is it a mile, you were saying? Or? It's a mile in jeans. So I wonder what's the record for running a mile and then compared to what's the record in jeans. Um, like, how much does that slow us down? I... You know what? I don't know what the mile record is. Like, well, I'm sure we could Google that and find out. Let's see. World record mile run. Currently at three minutes and 43 seconds. Heikem El Garou. Um, you know, I'm He's the not current right. holder for that. He's the men's record holder at 343.13. That is so fast. And the women's one is 412. Yeah. So, so what's woof. the one in jeans? Uh, well, the one in jeans is now, hang on, four minutes and six seconds. That's pretty fast. That's still well, pretty fast. Well, you need fast. to get the guy who has the world record just on its own to run it in jeans to see if he can make it the same time. Would be curious That'd to be see, That'd be the right? only way for me to just see, like, how does it actually slow you down or are you fine? So Johnny, who is the one, Gregorick, who did this, he should be going to the Olympics this summer, but he's not. Mm-hmm. Because COVID-19, obviously, right? so that'll be next year. So the race raised thirty five thousand dollars for mental health awareness. Uh, he said it's close to his heart because his brother Patrick died last year. So that's uh, what he's running oh, that's for. A good fundraiser. Wow, he ran in a pair of Levi's five oh one. Did they sponsor it? Uh <laughs> you know what? If not, they should have and should have donated some money. I don't. I don't see that. Like, I, I don't see that they sponsored it, but I'm sure with the news out there, they might slide Give a little, a little bit their yeah, way. They you never should. know. But, yep. So, there you go. He ran in jeans. So, if you ever feel dumb, I've done that before where I've gone into the gym and, like, I remembered everything but, like, pants or something. And yeah. I've just, like, I've worked out in jeans. And you always feel so stupid. Are you allowed to? I thought that. Well, no, I guess what are our rules? You you have to have shoes on, but I didn't you think you could. You have to have shoes. You have to have a shirt, and you can't be wearing revealing tank tops. Is that what? <laughs> they have something like that. <laughs> but as long, so this is, uh, oh, there was a previous record call. It's called the Blue Jeans Mile, which is an informal event. I don't know if you said that. That started I did not, in, actually. So this event started in 2017, and uh, they just keep doing it each year. So it's called the Blue Jeans Mile. Well, he did it, Nikki. That's fun. And what a great way to raise money. He did it. So, uh, you know what? If you are an Olympic athlete, and I know many of you are, and you're very disappointed that you won't be at the Olympics this summer, maybe there's something else you could do with your abilities. Yeah. Raise money that way. Fastest swim in blue jeans. I don't know. <laughs> uh, that'll really slow you down. I don't think that's suggested. Maybe the riot would sound better if they spent less time improving their lives at their gym. That was sarcasm. It's the riot on Radio U. Remember a time when Hudson would come in every so often and hang out with us? I do. I feel like we miss him. Well, you know what, Hudson? He's a mover and a shaker, Nikki. <laughs> Is it too hard for him to come in? And he's on his, well, he's on his jet right now. He's uh, flying back. I see. Uh, for his From show. From his weekend? Yeah. <laughs> weekend in Italy. And he's still got some time before he has to be here. Well, I'm glad we could at least talk with him, so. even if it's by phone. Good morning, Hudson. Hello, Riot. So, Hudson, what is this we hear? We've only heard it like fourth hand. 
<laughs> so we want to hear from you the story of what took place last Wednesday at a Chinese restaurant we won't name. When you were eating lunch, what happened? Okay. Well, I got, among other things, crab rangoon with my, with my meal. And uh, on the final crab rangoon, I think, I don't, I don't remember exactly, but it was once I was finishing up the crab rangoon, I, I had bitten on something in there that was, I was actually chewing on it. And I just thought it was a, a like a piece of the crab, like just a bad piece of There's crab. There's no crab in crab rangoon. <laughs> All okay. right, you were chewing right. on it because you were eating the Rangoon, and so you were just chewing right. on it, and you didn't know what it was. I didn't know what it was at first, but, and so I take it out, and, you know, it was it was the color that could have been, it could have been a bad piece of crab. I sucked on myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I take it out, and like, like I said, I'm pretty sure it was the last crab Rangoon, and so I didn't realize what it was. And I actually ate, I also got honey orange chicken, and I ate all of that, yeah. and, and I just had that piece of so, so-called so crab on my plate. And then uh, oh. after, you know, seeing it there for a little while, then I started to realize that it was no crab at all. It, okay. <laughs> so you're saying it was a Band-Aid? Yes. So this is worse. This means so- it wasn't the person who was making your food right then and there. This was the prep person. Yeah, yeah, it probably was. I don't know. I, I was trying. I was trying to think how it could possibly have gotten in there, unless they were like, you know, it, like you said, it had to be the prep person, unless they were just balling up the cream cheese mixture with their bare hands before it goes in the fryer. But I don't oh, think so. No, it has to oh, be someone no, ahead. So okay. That's nasty. Wait, first okay. off, that's I, bad. It is, but I need to. I hear... thought it was just in with the chicken on the I side. Too. Yeah, oh, no, 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 no. Um, it was inside a deep fried wonton filled with crab and cream cheese. Oh, okay, God. now here's what was this a like a, a piece of a band aid or was it an entire band aid like already wrapped? You know, like it, yeah. it slipped like it off had the slipped finger. off a finger, and you know, it, it clearly was. You know, you got some of the band. <laughs> it, well, um, I, I did quite a bit of inspection, and from my, from what I could tell, it was a band aid, and it was um, like folded around on itself, oh. as if it would be oh, if it no. slid off of a yeah, finger. A finger. <laughs> right? Okay. And so, like the, uh, the, what do you call it? The it the, was. Off- the finger the we part, know it the part that touches the wound on the yeah, band the gauze sort of part. the gauze yeah, yeah. so the gauze was visible uh well it was kind of it was stuck in on itself and i don't know if it's just for me chewing or what but it was pretty stuck together with okay with, it was oh, it must have been a quality band-aid is all i can say yeah. I I can go I can really ask. peel it apart as much as I wanted to. So, Hudson, you took somebody's gauze and sucked on it for a while. <laughs> oh, oh, watch it. Watch and it. And just watch moved it. it around in your mouth and all that stuff. Uh, how That's are, the worst. How are you doing? Are you going to go back? That's what I want to know. Oh, I'm not. I am not going back. But I, I ate lunch with my girlfriend that day and she is uh she's not convinced that we shouldn't go but there's other locations of that same chinese restaurant so maybe we'll just go to a, a different one and try our luck there this yeah, could have so a i'm going back to that location now, i'm not why, going back hudson why did you not complain why did you not did tell you them something, something? Well, okay um i, I guess I, well, first of all, it was actually dinner so it was later at, at, you know it was after i got off work so mm, it was pretty sure. late yeah so, uh, so I think they. By the time I was eating, and by the time I had realized, I'm sure they were closed. And then I just it was kind of put it off. And you know, I, I've worked in food service before, <laughs> and I don't want like to take a whole restaurant down for something that it's. I mean, it's disgusting, and I would have never done it because I would have worn a finger cock. Sure, but it's, it's it's possible that it was just an easy mistake. And I don't want to, and, and I always feel like if I'm reaching out to a place like that, that it's like, oh, he just wants something out of it, out of it for free. And I don't, I don't want the attention. Well, well I guess I'm if, on the radio talking about it now. But if, I, I don't want the attention. 
Well, what if in the guy, fairness, we made you come on the What air, if so. this prepper person <laughs> does this all the time? And because no one speaks up, no one has, you know, figured it out or acknowledged it that this guy whose nickname is Fingers or something is just like <laughs> losing band-aids left and right. And you didn't say anything. Well, um, that's a fair point, but I, I'll just let the free market take its course. Oh my the more gosh. band-aids, the, the more band-aids. The, less the business the restaurant gets. I guess. Wow. And so, but you didn't get sick or anything, and you didn't, like, when you discovered it, did you begin gagging or become bothered in any way? Uh, well, once it was... Since it was already out of my mouth and everything, I think I didn't have, you know, such a violent reaction as if I had just realized when I first pulled it out. Okay. You know, so I, did, I didn't have to. I feel that a lot of people are more upset about it than I am that didn't actually experience the Band-Aid for firsthand. But, sure. Um, we're on your behalf. We're I mean, I'm still upset. never going back there, so I'm, <laughs> I'm still having some after effects. When you have something so traumatic happen, Obi, you just like you you leave your body for a moment, and that's why you're just so calm because you just can't. Supernatural yeah, calm. Yeah, you just can't handle it. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, that's it. I'm glad you're okay. Yeah. I don't think even I want crab rangoon <laughs> after this. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of going to be hard to eat that anywhere, especially because it can, with the nature of the the food as, as it is, that you get a sneak attack. If anything's inside, there's no time for you to prepare. You can't pick it out ahead of time. Well, if not, you got to look like the weird person who's taking apart their food before yep. you eat you're it. Right. You Aww. must open every Everything Rangoon. beforehand. And a then, deconstructed crab Rangoon. <laughs> and you say it's Hudson's fault because <laughs> he wouldn't say anything about it. <laughs> For all we know, Fingers made this oh, one. I know he made this one, too. All right, well, Hudson. Right. Well, Hudson, we're glad you're okay. We're glad you're safe. Yeah, we are. We're listening to the worst of the riot. Radio U. Hudson found a Band-Aid in his crab Rangoon. <laughs> in Actually, the mixture. He found it in his mouth after he had taken some bites of a crab rangoon. That's a better way to put it. That's an important distinction. So So I want to look at the restaurant. I want to look online because sometimes they just call it rangoon. Like it doesn't actually have crab stuff in it. Right. Because he thought he got a big piece of crab and was like chewing on that. That's not it. He's a sweet kid. I know. Like that's being very generous. It's like it's usually just cream cheese and some onions. Right. (laughs) So let's talk, Nikki. We had a few people. We wanted to know if you'd go back. He's not going to, even though he would go every week. Now he's done. Now I got Chris on standby, but some of your text messages are. D says, I quit going to the local taqueria for a similar reason. It wasn't worth three breakfast tacos for $3. Just not good enough to do it. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Bub says Hudson needs to contact the local health department. Uh, Lisa says, first offense, I'd go back. I just wouldn't get the Rangoon for a while. I was saying this this place is not, I mean, you can look up records for any restaurant. Sure you can. And I don't want you, you don't want to. If it, you have a place you like. So I, I'm sure they've got things. Then Rachel says, I didn't think Hudson's story could get worse. Excuse me while I go sympathy vomit. <laughs> we thought when we heard this last week that he just had a Band-Aid, like within his orange chicken. You know, like in the sauce. In the sauce. And it was just like slipped off when... Uh, this means this person was making the prep stuff probably without gloves on. Oh. With their hands. Yeah, that's a given. <laughs> so Maybe it fell off a mole. No, he said it was wrapped around. <laughs> Never mind. I don't want to so, think about that. So, uh, welcome, Chris, to the show. Chris, our chief technology officer and fellow Chinese traveler. food fan as well. Yes. Yeah. Howdy, howdy. So, you heard Hudson, right? Yes. When I heard this story, when it broke. A tale of woe? There was some yelling that may came from my office. <laughs> yes. Like... Oh, no. Why, God? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Why? Why? This can't be real. Sure. Um, but then, you know, I took the weekend and had some time to, you know, reflect. And I looked at it, and I don't ever get a crab ragoon. So that I'm okay on. <laughs> so and, every, and here's the other thing. When I get the, uh, if you think, okay, well, what about an egg roll? Mm-hmm. Egg rolls. It's weird. I this, I take my egg rolls apart as I eat them. I you like, do? yeah, I slowly like peel off the delicious fried okay. coating, and I start no eating the does. inside with chopsticks. So, if there were to be any type of bandage, um, 
I'd be okay. Well, the question is, would you be okay from this place knowing that that's what's going on? I mean, keep in, go mind, there a lot. keep in mind, Chris, that Bloody Finger prepped everything else yes. now without a Band-Aid. Oh, yeah, not even the fact of why did he have the Band-Aid on in the first place, and that's all over the food. We've ignored that. Oh, well, there's a lot of heat going on on that walk. Oh, it just cooks know. out? Oh, my gosh. Bloody Finger cooks out. <laughs> but here's the other thing I was thinking. Well, okay, there's a distinction between... Okay, it's a band aid versus yeah. oh, there's bugs and there's animals that are just walking on stuff in the middle of the night. Those are two distinct things. Is that things. a possibility too? <laughs> Don't want to know. <laughs> Don't want to know. It's a band aid. A band aid. That's something. Hey, you can go. Hey, Bob. Um, we found this. Uh, there's been brought to our attention that band aids have been slipping into the food. Um, <laughs> And we're we're going to need to. You did it, but but <laughs> we're making a company wide mandate that uh, we're going to make a policy change that everyone must wear whatever gloves. You know, it's food. I it's mean, probably we're wise. All supposed to wear gloves. I thought they were supposed to wear gloves, anyways. <laughs> they don't. You sure? So well, I give them I a pass. Actually, okay, Hudson and I. My favorite part is that this Hudson and I ate there on the same day. Yeah. Now I ate earlier in the day. I had lunch there. He had dinner. Uh, but one of the things that I did notice is that behind the big plexiglass wall, because they the, put all this stuff up for the COVID stuff. So yeah. behind that, that they some of them were wearing masks and some of them weren't, and. No, no gloves. one had gloves. Because I, I actually wondered. I was like, okay, they've gone to all this effort. Like, what's going on behind the scenes? And, of course, you can see into the kitchen and stuff, and no, bo- no one was wearing gloves. I guess I thought even without the COVID stuff, you're supposed to wear gloves if you're prepping food. But that's just me. That's I'm, just sweet thinking. Again, you're, a, that's sweet, not gonna you're happen. a sweet kid. All right, so yes or no, will you go back? I would go back, but I would be cautious when I'm eating my food. <laughs> okay, Obi, yes or no? <sighs> you know, you Nikki, like it too. I love it so much, uh-huh. but I, I'll just say this one day, probably, <laughs> but not now, but not right now. Okay. Me too. Like <laughs> certainly not through the month of June. Okay. I mean, we'll, we'll re- look, let's regroup at the fall, like at the start uh, of fall. Okay. All okay, right. We'll regroup you know, then. you get into a fall fundraiser, yeah. you get a little desperate. Maybe well, you stop off for we'll a five ninety nine like, lunch special. We would really like some Chinese food then. And then we won't remember the Hudson thing and it'll be fine. Oh, you'll remember. I know. You it. never forget. I, it. I don't <laughs> think I can order crab rangoon from any place now. This is terrible. I wish he never told us. <laughs> yeah. If you hadn't known, it, so you could bad. live in ignorance. Yes. Yeah, there, there is a difference. <laughs> I really uh, miss that, right? General So's Band-Aid <laughs> with steamed rice and an egg roll. No, it's got to be fried. <laughs> Everything's fried. It's got to be fried. At yeah. least it's cooked. You know, you can do the twice fry. <laughs> actually, you twice fry it? Send, send it in twice. <laughs> the steam doesn't kill it. <laughs> The worst podcast with the best listeners. This is the worst of the riot podcast. Well, every team needs a leader. I know, but... And you have a lot of great leadership qualities, Nikki. Don't you let people tell you no, otherwise. You're not able to trick me into I this. I am tired of people trying to keep women down <laughs> and push them in the back and whatever. I you see you, Nikki. That. I see your qualities, uh, and I know that you are the leader that this country needs. And so I want you to get out there, Pick and I want you to do. show me... That ability that you have, uh-huh. and come on! I thought we were lead, supposed Nikki. to do it lead. together. Look at me! I'm ready to follow. Look at me! All that right. Is so unfair. I am a uh, liberated man. I'm not afraid for a woman to tell me what to do. I'm ready. <laughs> Be my leader, Nikki. Show me I'm what ready. we're doing this Friday. You plan it, you get everything in place, and I'll just show up. You've ruined it. It's perfect. Nikki is on. Yeah. Woo. Nikki for management 2020. You totally ruined it. Ruined what? Why? I, we're supposed to do it together. It's and a team I will, effort. I know. And every team has roles. Oh, my gosh. And you're the I leader, planner, you manager. That. 
and all that stuff, and I'm going to be the the, the comic relief who just lets me finally. I'm going to be the quirky sidekick. Oh my gosh! And uh, I'm going to cheer for you as you take your place among you. You'll be writing a leadership book when this is over. So on Friday, the law of the lid. It's getting lifted. So on Friday, we'll be having a riot after show where you can join us on our Facebook pages and hang out with us to do <laughs> whatever I choose for us to do. Woo! So make sure you Leadership. get you get ahead to Radio U Riot or Radio U and Middle Management. You go ahead and follow us. My cheeks hurt. <laughs> that. You follow us on Facebook. <laughs> so, some days you're too much. Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's nice to feel like it, there's there's uh, opportunity. There's so much opportunity for no, growth, Nikki. No, when you feel like you have a partner. <laughs> That's right. Someone to help. Supportive. <laughs> No. Nikki. Supporting. Nikki, I want to see you achieve your dreams. <laughs> I want to help you reach. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, I have uh, a few days. I I'll want to come up see, with something. I want to see you succeed outside of the home. <laughs> what? Yes. Okay. I'm just saying. All right. So that's why I'm really You're such a dork. I'm behind this 100%. Uh, at least you didn't say outside of the kitchen. Well, I just, I mean, whatever. Like, if it, is that what you want me to say? No. Okay. Okay, it's fine. All right, so Friday. Actually, I'd love to see you succeed in the kitchen and bring it in. Bring it in. Bring the stuff in. So, I mean, like. I, it might Mickey, be what we have to do then. Total package. All right, we can I'm do it. I'm supporting you. You might be thinking that this won't be quite as bad the second time around. Well, you'd be greatly mistaken. We're listening to the worst of the Riot Podcast. This Thursday. 4 p.m. Eastern. We've got what you want. That's what Jack Cerny says over at uh, Sony Interactive Entertainment. And by Jack Cerny, I mean Jim Ryan, the CEO. <laughs> so what are they saying? Um, he is saying that this Thursday, June 4th, 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific, look out, PlayStation 5, the future of gaming. They can finally give more information? They say that they will show an hour of new PlayStation 5 games. And anything else? What? Are we just watching the gameplay or are they going to say anything else? They say that we're going to see the gameplay. That's actually... Is that all you care about the most? Or Yes. I still want the prize. Well, of course the prize. The prize is... This is them like the siren's call. They're trying to hypnotize you into yes. spending money on it by showing you everything else but what you want to really know. But that's what I want to see. Like, I, I, I do want to know the price. And look, I don't care what it looks like. It's going to go under oh, the, the body thing. Of it, yeah, you everybody's mean? like, show me what it looks like. Like, what do you care? Like, it's going to sit behind the TV or whatever anyway. Maybe not. Maybe you'll have it on a pedestal. You put it on display. Maybe you will. I don't know. But I do know this, that both Xbox and PlayStation 5, like, we've barely seen anything about what their next-gen console will actually do. I mean, they've shown us, like, what did we get? The Assassin's Creed Valhalla trailer and the whatever trailer, trailer, trailer. No, 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 no. Anybody can pay somebody to make a big CGI trailer that looks like a movie. Ooh, I don't care. I want gameplay? actual gameplay. When I sit down there and I'm on the couch in front of the TV eating and I got the controller in one hand, what does it look like? Show me what it looks like. And they're like, well, you don't want to worry about that. So that should be Thursday for the new PlayStation. Theoretically. Now, of course, you guys know that's not going to launch till the fall. So they'll be like, we're going to give you an hour of gameplay. And we mean like a light hour of gameplay, which means, you know, about 20 seconds or whatever. <laughs> a lot of cutscenes. you mean, a lot of the other stuff. Just what, <laughs> like when the guy's running on the thing, what's that <laughs> look like? see what that is. How does that look? That's what I want to know. Well, you have to see on Thursday then what they'll show you. Well, the Xbox press conference or whatever they did a week or two ago, they're like gameplay. And they were like... Five seconds of gameplay. You're like, was that it? I'm like, oh, yeah, that's all we can show you now. This was the worst of the riot. And we'd like to congratulate you on having the stomach to stick around to the very end. <laughs> the riot exists because Radio U exists. And Radio U only exists because of your support. Find out more and give now at RadioU.com slash donate.